AI agents are the buzzword of the year. Everyone's talking about building them and how they're going to change the way that we work. So I've been using Python to build my own conversational AI agent to help me run my business. I've made a few videos on this and everyone seems to be loving it so far. So in this video, I'm going to give you a full walkthrough of the code base and explain how it all works. Let's get into it. Now, because this is a conversational AI agent, I need to have some kind of chat interface that I can use to communicate with my assistant. Currently, I'm doing this through the terminal. However, I could pretty easily add in a web interface or a voice chat using something like 11 Labs. Let me first explain how the chatbot works and then I'll explain how I'm using it to power my AI agents. The chatbot sits inside of this loop here. So every time I send a message to the chatbot, it receives the message, handles the instruction, generates a response, and then sends it back to me. The loop pauses to wait for me to send another message and then the cycle continues. So how does the chatbot process a message and turn that into an automated action? It's all done inside of the handle input function. At the top of the file here, we have an empty messages array, which I'm using to sort all of the messages between the user and the chatbot. Inside of the handle input function, we're appending the user message to the message history. This is going to become a very useful store of information as the conversation progresses. Now, in order for this chatbot to have any kind of automated functionality, we need to be able to identify the instructions in the messages that I'm sending to the chatbot. This is done using the agentic action function, which looks at the message history to determine exactly what instruction the user has given. I'll explain how this function works in a minute, but all we need to know for now is that the function returns two values. Number one, a plain text result. This could be a confirmation of an action being completed or some information that I've requested from the assistant. And number two, the assistant will also receive a context for assistant value. This will be used to provide the assistant with additional information, but not necessarily be sent back to the user. Here's an example of where this might be useful. Let's say that I'm asking the AI assistant for information about a recent meeting that I've had. In this example, I've asked who were the attendees at the recent meeting. Using my meeting assistant agent, the application can retrieve the meeting notes and generate a response, which includes the list of people who were at the meeting. Okay, so now I've got a follow-up question. What were my action items? If the AI assistant doesn't have the meeting notes saved in its context, then it's going to have to ask the meeting assistant agent for all of those notes again, just to be able to answer the question. Or it might get confused and think, what action items? Either of these are possible. Adding context to the conversation means that we can store all of the notes for the meeting in the context. So that when I ask this follow-up question, the AI assistant is able to answer the question immediately without having to ask the meeting assistant agent to retrieve all of those notes again. Once the agentic action has returned the two values, we need to generate a response to send back to the user. To do this, I'm using an LLM call which acts as the assistant thinking about how to respond to the user's message with the context of the information that has been returned by the agents. In this project, I'm using OpenAI's API to interact with an LLM, but the reality is that you could replace the contents of this function with code for another LLM provider and it would likely work exactly the same. It's important to make sure that you choose the right model for your use case that is both of a high quality but also low cost. In this example, I'm using OpenAI's GPT-40 mini model. Let me read you the prompt for generating response. You are a chatbot that is assisting Tom Shaw, a programming and tech content creator. You need to provide a response based on the current conversation. We've received his previous message and have taken the following actions. And there you can see where we will put the information that's come from the AI agents. Based on the message history provided and the actions that have been taken, how should we respond to Tom? You should respond in a friendly and informal manner as you are chatting with Tom. This is the system message, which is paired with a stringified version of the entire message history. So picture it like the AI assistant is looking at the entire conversation and then having a thought to itself, how should I best to respond to this? When the response is generated, it adds the message to the message history and then returns it back to the user. Perfect, we've just created a chatbot. Now that the chatbot has been explained, I want to focus our attention on the agentic action function and how it takes a simple message and turns that into automated actions. The agentic action function receives the entire message history in an array. Let's assume that this is the first message in the conversation, so there will only be one message here. For example, what tasks do I have to do today? The job of the agentic action function is to look at all of the agents that are in the team and determine if we should ask one of them for help, and if so, which one. In the case of our example here, it's pretty obvious that we need the task manager agents help us with this. You know that, I know that, but how do we make a Python application understand that? 
Well, if this were a team of real people, you'd probably use the following information to help make this decision. You need to know what the team members are good at. You need to know what tasks or actions the team members can complete. And you need to know what format they submit their work in once it's completed. This is where the agents and tools classes come into the project. I've created two classes that essentially act like templates for me when I'm creating an agent or a tool for my project. Each of these templates help me to standardize how my agents and tools are structured, which makes scaling the project much easier. If you've worked with AI frameworks like Crew AI or Autogen, this is a concept that you'll be familiar with. Let's take a look at the tool config class first. Each tool has a name, a description, a list of parameters that it needs to use to function, an expected response format, and a callable function assigned to it. Inside of the class, there are two functions. A get tool function, which is used to format the tool information into JSON so that it can be read by the agent, and a run tool function that is used to run the tool. Let me build an example tool to show you how it works. Let's imagine that we need a tool to fetch the price of stocks. The tool class will look something like this. Name, get stock price. Description, this tool retrieves the current stock price for a given stock symbol. Parameters, stock symbol, which is set to required. Expected response format, a string body containing the current stock price for the specified stock symbol. For the callable function, it's going to receive a params object, which is going to contain the stock symbol value. I can then use any finance API to retrieve the price for the stock symbol and then return it in the following format. This tool is now ready to be used by an AI agent. So we're going to move on to how an agent works. Creating the agent config class has a similar approach. Each agent has a name, a background, a list of tools, and an expected output. Similar to the tool config, there is a get agent info function, which is used to format the information about the agent. And there is a run agent function, which receives an instruction message and processes it. The process of running an agent is similar to the process of delegating tasks to agents. Using a simple prompt, I'm able to provide the large language model with its background, the tools it has, instructions on how to format its response, as well as general information to process the prompt. I can then take the instruction message provided by the AI assistant and run the LLM function. Once a response has been received from the LLM, I need to pass it to identify what decision has been made. You can see in the prompt that I've given it three options for formatting a response. If it wants to use a tool, it's going to return a response like this, which contains the tool name and the parameters that we're going to send to the tool. If it wants to submit a final result right away, the response will look like this. And for an error result, it will look like this. Using some simple if statements, we can effectively create a logic gate to handle each of these response types. Returning the content of the final result and the error result responses are pretty self-explanatory. For the tool action, I need to use some simple Python to pass the tool name and the tool parameters. Then I can find the tool in the tools list and call the run tool function. When the tool function is complete, the response can be used to return a result back to the AI assistant. Going back to the agentic action function, we can now use these agents and their assigned tools to help make a decision on how to handle the user's message. I've created this prompt, which is designed to give the LLM context on the task, the current situation, what agents it can delegate to, and how it should respond in order for the application to process the response. The response formatting is actually pretty similar to the run agent function. When I get the response, because I know it is going to be in one of these four formats, I'm able to create a simple logic gate that handles each of the different types of response. If the response is no action, we're going to return nothing to the AI assistant who then continues to handle the request. If the response is request information, we'll tell the AI assistant to request some specific information from the user. If the response is delegate action, we're going to need to get one of our agents to do something. So next we need to pass the name of the agent that we are delegating to, as well as the text prompt that we are going to give to the agent. For example, if the user has asked the system to create a new task, the agent prompt will look something like this. It's a bit more direct and machine friendly. Then we need to find the correct agent in the list of agents and call the run agent function by passing the agent prompt as the instruction message. This will then be processed by the run agent function that we ran through earlier, where it will use the tools that it has access to in order to complete the instructed action. When the agent responds, we can process the result and the context for the assistant, as I mentioned earlier. This then brings us back to the handle input function where we'll continue to generate a response and send it back to the user. So basically the AI assistant uses the agentic action function to figure out if we need help from any of the other AI agents. And if we do, it delegates that task to them automatically. Let's recap and run through the entire process. When the user sends a message, it is sent to the agentic action function, which uses the information from the conversation to determine which agent will be best suited to handle the user's instruction. The agent is then provided with a simplified instruction. 
The agent uses its knowledge of its specialist subject as well as a list of tools to determine what it should do to complete the instruction. If it needs to use a tool, it will run the tool's function with the required parameters and wait for a response. When it receives a response from the function, it will pass the result back to the AI assistant who will then handle the agent's response and use it to generate a friendly response to send back to the user. So that is how I'm building AI agents for my business. If you enjoyed today's video, please do leave a like down below hit the subscribe button if you're new and tap the bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video. See ya.